China Blue, our next speaker. Hello, everybody. I'm China Blue. Um, I'm an artist and the director of the Engine Institute. Um, as an internationally exhibiting artist, I work at the edge of art and technology, and I'm always trying to push that edge further and further ahead. <laughs> uh, a couple of years ago, I started out with uh, playing with circuits, and I made, uh, because my background is as a sculptor, I made this little firefly, which of course is not a circuit. You know, usually circuits are little flat things or big flat things that go into your computer, and I made one into a, an animated firefly. And uh, you can go to the next. And then I put it into a jar. And next. <laughs> and then this was the, the installation of these fireflies that I showed at the Newport Art Museum. Um, and what, what, the reason why I'm telling you this story, because it leads up to the Firefly Group, which is a, 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 a public art piece that I just finished um, mounting last Thursday. It's at the John Brown House Museum in their courtyard. And it's a large piece, and it was introduced and inaugurated with uh, the Dance of the Fireflies by the um, Providence Ballet Theater's Youth Ballet Company. And I was really excited to be able to work with the Youth Ballet Company to be able to extend the work into the community. And they were did this really wonderful performance with the fireflies in the jars. And then I made, uh, you, you can see these capes, they actually have LEDs encrusted through the back, and they so they glitter in the dark. And, and uh, so they danced with the capes and the jars to, to introduce the piece. And you can next. Next? Oh, it's there. Oh, and you can see them dancing. <laughs> you can see them dancing in the night. And they come down this long path, and, and as they come down the path, um, they have the fireflies in the jars, and the, and the capes are swirling around it. So it was just a really, really, everybody said magical experience. And um, here we are in the courtyard, and you can actually sort of see some of the silhouettes of their bodies and the silhouettes of their faces. And in the back is, you can connect, there, there's another one. And then in the back <coughs> is the installation, which is a, a large group of LEDs that cover a 20, an expanse of 25 feet. They're programmed to mimic the firefly blinking patterns. Um, and you can't obviously see this because this is a still. But uh, they're programmed to mimic my, the blinking patterns. And there's also an audio version to it too. I took the sound, I mean, I took the, the firefly blinking pattern and converted it into a sound piece. So the audio also mimics the firefly blinking pattern into sound, converts it actually into sound. So the, you have these two elements that are working simultaneously, and it's just absolutely a wonderful experience. Thank you very much. <laughs> Next up is Ross Miller. So, um, you know, we think about public sculpture, and we live around here, but there's lots and lots of history. History is a wonderful thing, but it also has really put a damper on public art around this area. And a lot of history is actually even um, not quite true. I was able to do a project <laughs> a few years ago which was marking the shoreline, the pre-landfill colonial shoreline around um, behind Daniel Hall City Hall. And it's, it's uh, 850 feet and it's 3 eighths of an inch thick and it's etched along in the granite there. And I'm very happy to say there's actually no interpretive sign or map. So it's something that if you discover it and are um, curious, you might sort of ask questions and people will tell you what it's all about. While I was researching this, um, I came across a whole bunch of information about things called um, fish weirs, which are structures that were built in the Back Bay of Boston uh, between 3,500 and 5,200 years ago. And that raised the question for me, um, this is it's called the Founders Monument. It's in Boston on, on Beacon Street. And it's actually the only representation in the downtown part of Boston of anything about the Native American culture. And on the left side, there are a couple crouching Native Americans depicted in there. And it actually has so many falsehoods and so many lies in this particular piece of sculpture. So I started to imagine, what if these fish came up to the surface? And maybe they're in bronze, and maybe they just popped up here and there around the city. 
And so to make a prototype, I contacted the city archaeologist, and we worked with kids from an um, alternative public school in Boston, and we used traditional techniques, we used traditional rocks, and we built a 150-foot long fish weir on the Boston Common, right in from where the shoreline would have been, and about um, a block away from where there are about 65,000 fish weir stakes still buried. And the thing that it really came to life was having people from the Wampanoag tribe, um, the um, Sockham of Massachusetts tribe, the medicine man from the um, Wampanoag culture, all come up for a dedication ceremony. And all of a sudden, this idea of a prototype for a permanent project was, oh my gosh, this would be really cool as an annual event. So what I've done is, for the last nine years, we've built this fish weir on the public garden. And when I start to talk to people about it, I say, this fish weir was maintained by people for 1,500 years in the place we now call Boston. Because when you start to think about people being here for 1,500 years and maintaining a structure, we really have to say the place we now call Boston. And my next um, desire is to try to find a place somewhere in Boston where it can be a more permanent piece that might actually be <coughs> in bronze that would honor both the, this history that's very deep in Boston, but also the contemporary Native American culture, which is still here, and try to expand the time frame told of history in Boston by about 5,000 years. <laughs> Before we have our dialogue, Ben Ho. Hello. So much cool stuff. This is really fascinating. Um, so I am standing in the right place. Yes. I am Ben Ho, um, and I'm an artist working primarily in digital media, um, including video games and sound installation, and coming from a background in classical composition and electroacoustic music. And I'm here to talk about a piece called Cycles, Tides, and Seasons which is running down on the, uh, the two big screens of the um, Boston Harbor Island Pavilion down on Atlantic Avenue on the Greenway there, uh, just up from the ice sculpture, ice chimes. <laughs> there you are, yes. Um, which is beautiful, yes. Um, and um, this is a, so it's a project of Boston Cyber Arts, and it's a real-time data visualization project. So uh, the Boston Harbor Island Pavilion itself is about a year old, um, and they have these two big screens. They're really weird screens. Um, they're uh, six feet tall, ten feet wide, and um, <clears throat> but they're only uh, forty-eight by uh, six, forty-eight by sixty-eight pixels. So the pixels are like this big. It's a really weird screen. So it's a really interesting thing to develop for because I don't exactly have one of those in my in my studio. Um, but. Uh, basically, the project is um, the Boston Harbor Island Pavilion folks. It's, it's basically the nexus of information about Boston Harbor Island's national park, so all of the um, islands out in Boston Harbor. Um, I wanted to take, the goal for this project was to take uh, basically three different, um, well, in keeping with the goals of uh, the Boston Harbor Islands uh, National Park, I wanted to uh, try to link people down on the Greenway to the rhythms of uh, the Harbor Islands themselves and, the, and the, the harbor itself. So I tried, the idea was to superimpose three different time scales of information. One is the rate of the flashing on the, can we go back to the lighthouse real quick? That's Boston uh, Light. This is the oldest uh, lighthouse uh, in the US. Actually, on, on this site was the first lighthouse, which was 1716, was built. This structure was actually built in 1783, so it's the third oldest. But anyway, so the three lighthouses out there all have different uh, rates of flashing, so I wanted to incorporate that very kind of local rate of change into the piece. There's also a larger rate of change, which is the tides. So I'm pulling in real-time information from, uh, from over the internet. It's a real-time piece um, about not only the tides, but also the um, wind information, so that um, there's kind of a representation of waves that goes up and down as the weather changes out there. Um, and so that's something that'll change like if on your commute, maybe it'll be different in the morning than in the evening. And then there's also these, um, I talked to an entomologist here at Harvard, who's studying the bee populations out there. So I got data from a whole season of how the population of bees change. And so those three rates of change are superimposed with the goal, yeah, there's a bee, um, with the goal of um, superimposing, or basically connecting people in the kind of urban core of Boston with the rhythms and processes of nature. And that's what it looks like. So I guess I'll keep going. So these are the, <laughs> the there's a, a, a rate of change of things sweeping across this way, which is a lighthouse. Now, okay.